Hey guys, uh, welcome back to probably the uh, the episode that at least I've been looking forward to, which is the day that we're actually going to get on and give Sapphire here her first ride. I mean, it's it's a very very rewarding journey that we've been on. It's taken a lot longer than uh, what I've ever really, apart from the first horse that I've ever actually trained. Uh, that one took me about three months to get on him because I was just so, uh, you know, obsessed with getting everything right from the ground and preparing my horse before I did that first ride. Um, and she's kind of a similar, but much, much worse case than uh, that first horse that I had. Um, so it has taken a lot longer. Uh, one is, you know, she needed that extra time. I mean, look at her now. She's, she, I mean, just a super chilled horse really really nice still a couple of minor issues uh, picking up the feet we've got a bit of an issue there but everything else oh apart from if i leave her in the paddock with the saddle on she'll try to buck it off and she'll try to bite at it so she hasn't fully gotten used to the saddle yet and that's my fault i haven't actually left the saddle on for a, a, a significant period so she actually starts to you know accept it as you know part of her uh but we'll, we'll do that as well uh the other part was for me I don't want to get on a horse that I don't feel safe getting on. Uh, so it's probably taken about three weeks. Today's going to be the day that we're going to get on. So if you're interested in seeing how I'm going to prepare Sapphire for that first ride and all the checks that we go through, there's about four major checks that we're going to go through. So uh, I'm going to let you in on those little secrets. Um, and at the end, you're going to watch me fall off. Well, I hope not. But the, 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 the point is with, with the first ride, you really hope and pray that it goes very well, not just for your own sake, your own safety, but for her sake. I want her to, to really uh, feel as if everything that we've done up until this day, you know, today is just like, ah, now I get it. I know this stuff. This is easy. So, which leads me just to answer one question from, I think it was Hafiz, who asked a very interesting question. So allow me just to answer that question now, and then we'll start to get uh, into the, the checks and, and getting on and doing her first ride. So half was on one of the videos, I think it was on the side passing video with Sapphire. He said, you know, how come we don't see you do the same exercise with all the other horses that you train? And that's a very, very interesting question. The, 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 the actual fact is, I think that I do. But the philosophy that I adopt is that for me, there's not a huge difference between doing some groundwork and, and riding because I'm always doing some form of riding. So this is a, a rein, this is the halter pressure. I've got pressure that I can apply to different parts of her body. All I'm asking her to do is exactly what I'd be asking her to do when I'm on her back. Um, and the trick is with the groundwork for me is to get to the state or get to the level, sorry, for the horse to get to the level where she can just be a horse around me, not worried about me, uh, not having to second guess me. So she's got that respect, she's got an understanding of what I'm asking her to do, and she's got no fear of me or my tools. So with the side passing, I mean, let's take a tick box exercise. All the horses that I work with, I don't do anything phenomenal with them. I work on solid foundations, so that means that they can walk, trot and canter on loose rein. They can uh, flex their head and neck and they're very soft with their mouth. They can yield their hindquarters, they can yield their forequarters, they can bend their ribcage, they can side pass, they can trot in circles, they can canter left lead and right lead, they can do stopping, uh, nice ones, and they can do a bit of backing. So it's, it's nothing exceptional, it's just, you know, uh, a good solid foundation. So that's what all the horses that I work with at the end of the training, that's what they're able to do. Uh, how I get there, yes. It's a little bit different with each and every horse, but the end result is, is, is kind of the same. Okay, so because today is going to be the day that we get on, I'm going to be a little bit more um, uh, precise and demanding of what I'm expecting from her. Okay, so there's going to be four exercises that are equivalent to four checks that I do with my horse before I feel comfortable getting on. Now, the first one is what you've seen us do all the time, okay? No, it's not backing. It's lunging. So, sending her to the left. But this time, it's going to be a shorter rein. And there's going to be uh, an element of surprise. 
this is going to be the element of surprise. So she's got to be able to show me that I can trust her. That if something strange happens, that she's not going to jump out of her skin, buck me off or try to run away. So this is very good. The other thing that I'm looking for, so she's already telling me this side is good. The other thing that I'm looking for, apart from the reaction or the response, which is what I prefer, is how round is she in her rib cage, in her body? Is this leg stepping underneath her body quite a bit or is she stiff? And here, if I was to do zero to 10 on stiffness, zero being extremely stiff, or let's do softness. Zero being uh, zero softness and 10 being very, very soft. I'd put her about a seven. I'd like to see more bend, but I am flagging her with this flag. So it does make things a bit challenging. If I was to release this flag and just ask her to go around here, that's softer. That's softer, you see? So it's this added stimulus. And that's a good check because it tells me that she's not too bothered about it. Good. So we take her to the other side. Same thing. I'm going to come under, especially where my legs are going to be. I want to see if she's going to kick out at my legs. Is she going to overreact? Throwing her head up and down. No problem. So... She's actually much softer on this side. I see a lot more bend in her neck and in her body. I don't want her to come to a standstill though. I want her to move and take this pressure. Good, I'm gonna come up above her head, above her eye level. That's super nice. Now I might just do a couple of changes here. Maybe take her somewhere towards where the camera guy is standing because he's a little bit high up standing on a box i want to make sure that she's able now just to walk in between me the fence which is going to create a tight space here and see if she can just walk between us excellent no issues there whatsoever just ask her to walk again I don't even need this flag. I can just suggest that she walks. Suggest. Excellent. So that's check number one. Two things that you're looking for with this exercise is, is she overreacting to me giving her some sudden pressure like that? That's normal. Okay, if I just keep going for a little bit, remember release to what you want there. Uh, so is she reacting or is she responding to that pressure? How does she respond? If you like what you see, great. The next thing that you're checking for is how soft she is and how round she is in that, in, in, in that lunging exercise. Imagine if the horse is really stiff and really tense, the head is going to be uh, up tight and the body's going to be up tight and she's going to be turning, you know, like a, like a skier and her inside hind is not going to be stepping under. It's going to be here, here. It's going to feel very jerky. That is all indications that the horse is not feeling particularly comfortable on that day. Okay, second exercise. Always balance out your horse. So after every exercise that you do, where you're asking them to move using your tools. So here she thinks I'm asking her to move. I'm going to have to work. Just remind her it doesn't mean move. Good girl. So make sure none of this means move. Good girl. And at this stage, it's not really fear. It's sometimes she's confused and she does what she thinks I'm asking. Okay, other side. So I'm getting her to see the flag out of both sides. Good. Now what I too do is I'm going to be sitting in the saddle. My head is going to be up here, right? So I need her to be able to see something flapping around up here on this horse and not respond, okay? So this is the first one that you want to do. 
The next one is, since she's seen me out of both sides, I want to be standing on this side and get her to see the flag pop out in front of her eye on the other side. So the best way to do this, okay, is not just to straight away stand on this side and then make the flag magically appear on the other side of the horse. Here's a little tip. You can stroke your horse's head, get them to see it from this eye. You walk around this side, go over the horse's head, and here you go. You've got a no drama way of getting the horse to see you on one side and the flag on the other side, okay? So now I can take it off and put it on. Take it off, put it on. I need her to see and to feel that something is really going side to side. She's giving me <laughs> the evil eye there, thinking, what the hell are you doing? I'm just doing checks, that's all. Okay, so not perfect yet. With this one, even though she's got her hind leg cocked, I need to see a bit of soft in her eye. There you go. There you go. That's puppy dog eyes. So... I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll keep the flag on this side, take this over her head. So she sees me on this side, she sees the flag on that side. Now I can just flag from this side and that side. There you go. Have a look. That is what we're looking for. So that's a good sign that the horse has accepted that, that she's not too bothered. So few signs. Eye is soft, she was chewing. Back leg is cocked. Good. So that's exercise number two. Exercise number three to make sure that my horse is ready to ride, to be ridden. Okay. Flexing. I need to make sure that she fully understands how to give to the pressure of this halter. I want to try and get it to the point where, and when I release here, I want to release kind of abruptly, see what she does with her head. Because everything that she's doing is telling me what's going on inside of her body. So with me dropping that rope like that, she keeps her head exactly where it is. She doesn't overreact. Very nice response. So that one is something that I didn't particularly like. There we go. That's a nice one. Switch to the other side. <clears throat> now, why do I need flexing? Why do I choose to do this as one of my checks before I get on? Now, imagine if the horse is straight from the nose to the tail, the straighter they are, the more power they've got. So if I go to put my foot in the stirrup and I'm sort of about to swing my leg over her back, which is, you know, I'm in a crappy position, very vulnerable position. If she spooks and, you know, the first thing that she's going to do is push off, go forwards. And if she goes forwards, it takes one step for her, for me to come down here and I would be exactly in line with her hindquarters. Typically what the horses do when they, they see something that spooks them behind them, they'll kick out at them. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty dangerous uh, option. How do you minimize that risk? Of course, you cannot always eliminate the risk completely, but how do you minimize that? You make sure that those hindquarters, if she does want to move, the only place that these, this powerhouse here, this danger zone, it's going to go away from me because her nose is bent, her ne head and neck are bent, and there's no, no pressure from my side. Look, I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's how she's, she's choosing to respond. So from this position, if, if I ask her to move, she's just going to yield her hindquarters. And when she yields a hindquarters, she loses all the power, you know, and, and she's moving her hips away from me. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not in any um, uh, position to be kicked by her. So that's check number three. Check number four is really just making sure that you can tap the horse, touch the horse all over the place move these stirrups around jump up and down tap the saddle at this stage you really want to be a little bit loud with all of this you really want to make sure that your horse is okay with it good 
Good. I'm going to do one final check for you guys as well. The final check is for me to actually put a foot in the stirrup, lie on her back and touch her on her opposite side. Okay. Because that's where your legs going to be going. She's going to have her head and bent head and neck bent towards you. So she's going to see you at the left eye only. Then you're going to get up, be getting on. She's going to see everything that you're doing. Then you're going to put your leg over the other side and touch her with your right leg. Um, you don't know, maybe she gets spooked at that. So we've done enough getting on and getting off. Remember this stance. There was a video that we talked about how to rock your horse to, uh, to get them to stand square. So I'm just going to grab the saddle there there she's not stable now she's stable okay put my foot in the stirrup get her to bend grab the mane there we go now with this hand you're going to be touching her butt moving the stirrup no reaction Gonna stay up here a little bit. Put this leg on. Oops. Bend the head and neck. Put this leg on. Rub, rub, rub. Remember at this stage, you don't want to hide anything from the horse. Expose all of those areas that you believe might be a cause, uh, might be a cause for her to spook. So, you know, me getting on, rubbing her all over here, rubbing her on the other side. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Tune back in for the first ride. I'm just going to put my reins on. I'm going to do the first ride with a halter, uh, but I just need to change, change ropes. Okay, so just before I got on, I forgot actually that I haven't really cantered her. So I just need her to loosen up a little bit. That was going to be a silly mistake from my end. Because this is exactly the exercise that my partner over here, Mr. Sari, is going to be helping me with. After I get on and I get her to yield a couple of times, both sides, I'm going to ask him to come into the round pen. And I'm just going to be a sack of potatoes on her back and he's going to be moving her around. That means I do trust him. <laughs> my life is in his hands. So, Sari, when, uh, when I ask you to come in, uh, just follow my, my cues. So if I say, you know, send, you know what to do. And I say, uh, you know, change, you know what to do. But very important that if she does take off in a canter, uh, don't immediately go to changing because I might feel like she's okay. Um, and it's a good thing to get it out of the system. All right. Okay, a little bit sweaty. I'm sorry. And never fool yourself into thinking that you can tire your horse out. And that's how they're not going to buck you off. That's the worst thing you can... You can believe these horses, especially the Arabians or the Anglo Arabs that are bred for speed and endurance. These guys can go, what, you know, the races are typically a hundred and over a hundred kilometers long. So a hundred and 120 and 160 kilometers in one day, actually in a few hours, they're able to do that. So you can't really tire your horse out, even if she's breathing heavy, Sweating a little bit, she's still got plenty of energy inside of her. 
Good. <clears throat> okay, let her know that I'm coming. That was the first couple of steps. And now I am committed. My hand is, is, I've got the shorter rein on the left side right now. She has not yet seen me with her right eye on top of her. My legs are staying off her body at least two or three inches so that I don't make a mistake of touching her when I don't want to touch her. Um, okay. Let's hope that everything goes well here. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> That is what you want. So all of those checks initially tell us that she's quite comfortable in, you know, dealing with situations that she's not familiar with yet. Now I'm going to let her head go out straight. Okay, so she chooses to move. She's chewing and she's licking there. Left eye is done. Okay, let her sniff me. If she wants to nibble, again, there's not much that I can do. I'm not going to kick her. I'm not going to reprimand her uh, just let her nibble okay now if she puts her head straight i'm gonna let her and then i'm gonna pick up my right rein gonna bend her very gently she's seen me now from the right eye this is good now i'm just gonna ask for that bend gentle bend remind myself i feel tense in my butt and in my thighs remind myself to breathe <sighs> just hold until she gives There, and rub her there, pick up the left rein, flex her onto this side. She decides to move. I'm going to release when she's soft and not moving. So I've released. No legs, no hands. Good. Pick up on the right rein, get her to flex. Remember, give them the time that they require to figure things out. Very good. Good girl. So what do you think I should do now? Should I just ride off into the sunset? That wouldn't be the brightest idea. So now that she's standing here nice and calm, I'm going to flex her to the left. Hopefully just stand still. I'm going to rock, take my right foot out. Gonna rock my body a little bit, let her know that I'm coming, and then step down. That was as close to perfect as you could possibly want. Well done. Well done, Sapphire. You have no idea how, how good I feel, and I hope you feel the same. So, the reason I get off is, okay, she, you know, she hasn't had a human on her back. I don't want her to think that, uh, okay, what's that going on up there? Is that going to stay for forever or is it going to come off or what, what's happening? I just say, yeah, it does come off. I do come off. And I will get off when you're standing nice and relaxed and not overreacting. You know, she's doing absolutely great. Well done. So now, congratulations on watching the first ride. Now you're going to watch the second ride. I've always wondered, <laughs> since horses live in the moment, you know, do they separate the fact that I get on and then I get off? That's one ride. And then this is the second ride. I don't know. I like to think of it that way. So you can cheat a little bit and get a few rides. Good. I'm going to rub her with my right leg and I'm going to put my right leg over, same as before. Not being quiet, but I'm being obvious. I don't want to say loud, I'm being obvious and we've prepared her for all of this. She knows all of this. Okay, now I'm going to ask her to move. Got my night latch here, just in case. So I'm going to now watch my legs. I'm going to just touch with my legs. Good. Release. Good. Now I'm going to touch again. No response. Cluck, cluck. She understands that means move. 
she just doesn't know where she's just going with what she knows nose tilted to the inside pressure on the ribs means push your butt out and yield good girl relax amru relax good girl so a little bit of resistance on this side be gentle give her the time now pressure with both legs good again pressure both legs no response cluck cluck release good girl very nice I'm going to just let her take a couple of steps now. Good. Excellent. Left side. Touch. She's about to move. She needs an extra little bit of motivation. So there. So you can see the, the pressure that you apply has to be thought out well thought out you have to know what it is that you're doing when you're applying pressure when you're asking a question you need to know what kind of question am i asking you need to know what am i expecting her to do when do i release that pressure good girl you're gonna do a few more steps on this side see if we can get a circle good girl Now, the, the night latch isn't so important right now because I've got her on a, on a circle, on a tight circle here. So she's always yielding those hindquarters. So she's not really going to, I hope, be able to buck me off if she goes to bucking. Good girl. But it is going to be important when I start moving around the round pen. Um, now, is there any, you know any sort of shame in holding on to something well you're always going to hold on to something especially in the first ride i mean anything could go wrong so you could either hold on to your saddle or you could hold on to her face the choice is yours i wouldn't really recommend holding on to a horse's face as the first ride because you're going to be jerking away on her nose if you just got a halter on <laughs> that's a wrong time for that big warm blood to be galloping around <laughs> but anyway again like i always say great training opportunities okay back to this side let's get her to walk off in a circle You're a good girl. Do not listen to your girlfriend over there. That is not what I want you to do. <laughs> oh, no. Good girl. Okay. I might just wait a little bit until that horse calms down. Because that horse is galloping and bucking all over that arena. I don't want that to really jeopardize me and Sapphire here. So just take advantage of this. Do something productive with the time. Let her know that she's doing a great job just standing here, relaxed. I'm going to reach back, touch her bum. Reach back with the other side. Touch. Reach forwards, touch her neck. Forwards, touch the neck. Good girl. I love the fact that she's got her ears on me as well. Very nice, waiting for, for me to ask for something.
Okay, oh, almost. So she walked off by herself there. I just shut her down by bending her head. So I'm gonna let her go out a little bit straight because she took those couple of steps straight by herself. So I might just let her. So you see I'm letting go and then take back that bend. Good girl. Ask her to walk. Now bend. Good girl. Bend to this side. Good girl. Constantly reminding myself to stay relaxed. It's easy for you to get tense in the butt. Tense in the thighs, tense in the shoulders, tense in the neck. Any part of your body that you feel a bit of tension, just breathe that tension out. Relax. It doesn't do you any help to sit up here tense. Okay, I'm going to straighten her out a little bit here. Let her walk straight if I can. There we go. There we go. Again, baby steps here. Good girl. Bend her. No legs. She should understand this means flex. Flex. Just giving her that time. She's still putting a little bit of tension in that rope. Good. Good. Okay, feeling good here. Left rein is shorter than my right. If I do need to go for an emergency break, I can just pull up with my left hand and that's going to pull the left rein because it's off center. Perfect. Good girl. So this is her first cruising lesson. My legs are off when she's walking. And they only close and touch her when she stops by herself. Here, I'm going to ask her to bend and stop. and stop. Good girl. Good girl. So this time I'm going to try to walk the other way. So we're going to try walking to the right. Okay. My night latch is on my right side, so struggle to hold on to something. So just got to do it with two reins here. So notice how she's figuring out what I'm asking her to do. There's no, there's no tension anywhere. It's more like. The aids come in for communication. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. 
think the time has come now. Put my trust in God. And then the work that we've done to prepare her. And in this horse. And hopefully it goes well. Mr. Sari, could you very uh, calmly just crawl into the uh, to the round pen? Okay, so Sari, uh, if you just come in and just stand in the middle, don't don't put any attention on her, don't face up to her or anything. And I'm going to walk you through what what I want to do. Okay, so rather than just go off into a trot in one direction or the other I want to do a little bit of turning okay so the way that we're gonna do this is I'm gonna ask her to go you can ask her to go with me okay so we're gonna go that way first okay and then we're gonna go a couple of steps I'm gonna put my inside leg on pull my left rein you're gonna step back draw her in and change directions we're gonna do figures of eight in this area yeah okay so Send her off just gently. Good. Now, walk with her. Now, step out. Send her this way. Step out. So now me and Sari are basically working together. Step out. To get her to do what she knows to do, which is just round penning. Step out. Good girl. And I'm also including my aids. Step out. Good. Step out. Step out. Good. I don't want her to start trotting. Try not to step forwards into her when she turns. Yeah? So just stay there. Oop. <laughs> not immediately let her walk out a little bit okay good yes yes this is nice this is good three-way dancing takes uh three to tango doesn't it or is it two to tango <laughs> who cares we're having a good time excellent so i'm just delaying my cue <clears throat> until I see that she's actually responding to Sari's cue so that I go in soft with my cue. You see this? I've got very gentle pressure. Good. So now we can step, send. Okay, so now we can get let her go a bit further. Let's see if she decides to trot. That's when we're going to change. Okay, now. Step. Just be gentle there. Let her decide to trot. Okay. Good girl. Don't step in. Good. Let her decide. That's good. Good girl. Just gentle point. So she'll respond to the energy you put into that point. So you could just point at your hip level and she should pick up that it's a gentle walk off. So this is great. This is great. Okay, now you can step out, change directions. So simultaneously, or with a tiny bit of a delay, I pick up on my rein. I'm going to pick up on my rein gently here, make sure she's bent towards Sari. And Sari really is a representative representation of my, of my uh, inside leg, my right leg. She should be bending around my leg like it's a pole. She should be bending around Sari like he's a pole. Good girl. Doing great. Good. Okay, this time 
if she de decides to trot, let her trot off a couple of couple of steps. I'll say change. Okay, I'm gonna guide her away from you a little bit. Keep her head and neck straighter. So she walks away. This is a great first first ride. Hey baby. Well done. I never thought that we'd see the day. Thanks to our customer for allowing us the time to work with her. Really, if we were under time limitations, I would have given this horse back a long time ago. Okay, let's just gently ask for that trot. A couple of steps. I'll say change. So I'm going to touch her with my legs. Good. Okay, step out. Good. Easy. Drop your energy. If she takes off, just let her for a couple of strides. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to feel my muscles just melt a little bit. Good girl. Well done. I'm gonna improvise here. Good girl. Send, 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 send. Good. Okay, this time we're gonna let her trot until I say change. Okay, maybe you can ask her to gently. Good. Okay, step out. Good, that was beautiful. Well done, baby. Big trot. Send. Okay. Step out. Well done. So you can see how it really helps to have somebody in the arena that can just help you out with getting her to stop and pay attention rather than you trying to pull on her face. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna trot a lot longer. Okay, well done. That's it, good. Okay, stop her. I think she's fine. The reason I wanted to stop her there is because I got very tense and I started bumping on her back. And I didn't want that to happen. Okay. <laughs> calling me out on my crappy riding good girl go on just gentle
Madam Pinny Ears is back. Expecting her to kick out. So we can't let her stop when she gets pinny eared and decides to stop for herself. Okay, and now stop her and rise. <sighs> okay. Oh, I know that doesn't look like much. I just thought you guys know that she's really not fully hook, hooked on to me and of course that's the next uh, probably the next session I've got tomorrow as well before I travel so we'll probably canter her tomorrow and then not have the help of anybody inside the arena and fully take over but to show you that she's she's connected to Sari and not to me is maybe Sari just walk around her hind, see if she'll follow you. So I'm not doing anything. I didn't ask her to move, didn't ask her to go, didn't, I'm not turning her. So it was Sari really that was doing, if not 70, it would be 80% of the work, even 90% of the work. And I was just trying to be a good sack of potatoes where I'm just going with the flow. She did great. Okay, Sari, thank you very much. Maybe you can just give her a, a stroke on the, on the forehead. Let her know she did a good job and then just walk away. She's probably going to follow. Yes, she does, and that's perfect way to put me in frame <laughs> for the uh, uh, super wise, intelligent, fantabulose of uh, words of wisdom. <laughs> I'm just glad that we survived. I'm glad that it went well for her. And honestly, I've been dreaming about this day for, for quite a while, ever since we got this, uh, this mare, Sapphire been an absolute challenge and extremely rewarding in terms of what she has made me do on a personal level number one address my own fears started writing a book um, I'm about six maybe seven actually more seven chapters in um, all about what horses have taught me, you know, life before horses and, and life after horses. Can't wait to finish it, actually. Um, a lot of nice things in there. 
uh, but she she's forced me to really relive the traumas that I had when I initially started working with horses and I was attacked pretty pretty severely by a horse that I you know felt like I knew what I was doing but I really didn't and uh, that one encounter really humbled me and taught me you know one of the major major lessons that um, I've learned in, in my life and it came in such a dramatic form that it would be very difficult for me to ignore that so it'll be etched in my mind like a like you know something etched into into a mountain forever um, and that's seek first to understand before you're understood or before you try to be understood so you know that's from Stephen R. Covey's uh, seven habits of uh, effective people or something or highly effective people um, and it's a it's a it's a law or a, a, a lesson that really became extremely clear to me when I became a little bit arrogant and thought that I knew everything and started working with a horse that was way above my capability um, so he really taught me how to seek first to understand really get into horse psychology understand how they think what they how they perceive things how they learn how they interact with other animals and other horses because it's stupid for us to think that a horse can elevate its its intellect to be able to understand a human language it's us we we've, we've got to really get down to their level in terms of communication um, and and communicate with them so it, it just makes sense to understand how horses communicate to be able to communicate with them effectively um, so that that's something that she's really helped me uh, get over that trauma I was always afraid of horses that have the uh, potential to charge and in the first video I think I, I, I really broke through that and I just said you know what screw it if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen charge go on bite attack kick whatever you need to do I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here and we're going to get through this. And luckily, you know, the second day there was a transformation. And then if, if maybe a week later, there was a second transformation where you, you've got a video on that one. So I'm extremely pleased with, you know, what she's allowed me to, to work with her on um, and allowed me into her world. And the journey only gets better and more exciting from now on. Anyway, thank you very much for um, watching. Honestly, it means a lot to me. Uh, to know that people appreciate what we're talking about, what we're doing here with these horses. So please keep the comments and ideas coming. Um, you know, like and subscribe and share as many videos as you can. Uh, because without it, it's, I don't know if, if it's completely worthwhile doing all these videos. So please, with your support, it would be really giving me that added level of encouragement to know that you're interested and to keep going. Um, anyway, till the next video, take care of yourself. And I'll see you soon.